Hey guys, it's Kristen from Rethink Tailoring. I'm sure many of you guys have heard about the all call going around from Blue Cross and Alina Health that they're in need of fabric masks. Um, there's a mass shortage of regular hospital masks. So it's kind of their worst case scenario, but they are in need and the community has risen up to the challenge. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little video of where to start, um, just to help you out if you need a little push in the right direction. It already seems like there's a huge movement locally of people getting things done, so it's really amazing to see. Um, just something that I uh, like to do when I'm doing um, production mode and trying to make a lot of things, I do like to make my pattern. And this LaCroix box happened to be exactly nine inches by six inches. So I cut that out, I've got this, piece right here and then I if I use my rotary cutter and I can lay down multiple layers of fabric and actually cut through multiples at once. Um, for me I just like to have that weight of the cardboard and I feel like I can just knock out a bunch of cut pieces all at once. Um, you could also take a pencil or a pen and trace around your fabric and cut that out with scissors. Um, I would just recommend to cut off your um, pencil edges or your ink if you're using pen and you don't have a pencil. Um, we're all working with what we got, so if you're using pen, just make sure to cut off your edges so it won't bleed and get weird in the wash. Um, if you are noticing that the mask feels a little bit too small for you and doesn't extend far enough down on the chin, you can always extend the vertical height. Um, you could try an inch and see if that's good enough for you, but uh, if you're making it for yourself at home, you can definitely adjust that. Um, the approved version that the hospitals are accepting are the 9 inch by 6 inch. A um, couple other things, we have our 100% cotton fabric, um, and this is like a typical quilting weight, so it's a finer weave. They do recommend using flannel on the inside, but I was uh, messaging back and forth with Susan, and she was saying that the Flannel does need to be a finer weave and a high quality flannel, um, just so that not as much is getting through it. So um, when in doubt, if, if it feels like there's too much air getting through it, um, she says that we can use the double of that typical like finer weave cotton as an option. So that is fabrics from my kids line. So I'm scrounging through that to make some fun colorful ones. Um, you're also going to need some elastic um, if you can find any. I will definitely be doing my best to share my stash. Um, I found a secret stash. I couldn't remember where it was when I moved it over and I found it. So I've got my quarter inch elastic here. I will be cutting that into seven inch chunks and um, seeing who needs it. You can also use the elastic cording. I'm happy to share that as well. Just make sure to add a little bit extra um, when you're cutting this because they want you to tie a knot at the end so it doesn't pull through right away. Um, they want that to be obviously um, sturdy. So make sure to add a little bit extra when you're doing this. Um, I would say probably closer to eight inches. Um, and then you can also use eighth of an inch elastic. And they did um, update things. They have a great picture tutorial on their blog, um, on the blog post from Blue Cross. and. Um, they go through how to use a non-elastic version. So they go through how to make the ties and to put that on there as well. So they are working to make sure that even if there's an elastic shortage, that they can get things done. So um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way and I will get started on a video tutorial in case you work better um, seeing something get made. Um, I'm gonna knock out a tutorial here. Thank you guys so much. Again, it's Kristen from Rethink Tailoring. See you guys around.